Comedy Hour, presented by Frigidaire, division of General Motors, starring Bob Hope, Frigidaire, makers of America's number one refrigerator, the finest in food freezers, America's most beautiful electric range, the amazing new all-porcelain automatic washer, the Frigidaire electric clothes dryer, electric ironer, air conditioner units, the sensational new dehumidifier, and many other products for homes, stores, farms, and industry. And now, Frigidaire's Comedy Hour, starring Bob Pope. I look like I'm gonna fall over. I am, believe me. Thank you very much. I just want to tell you, I'm very thrilled to be back here once again for Frigidaire to grab a little of that quick frozen money. I, uh, I want to say that it's a great, great thrill to get back on television. I've, uh, uh, this is my third, I've had three shots on television. Fortunately, they all miss me, but I must say, I must say, I'm getting used to this racket. I'm beginning to like it. I mean it, with the camera angles and the, the makeup, the lighting and all the technique. It's something, you know, it takes time. After all, Faye Emerson wasn't built in a day. <laughs> and, and, and it's really great. And while I've been away, they, they've brought in this new thing, this new wrinkled colored television. Oh, that's really gonna be something. Now when you're squinting at your television set, you can go blind in six delicious flavors. <laughs> Colored television is really gonna be all right, though. You can have your present set adapted for only $3,000. <laughs> for $4,000, Grandma Moses will come over and paint the screen for you. <laughs> but it's a great, great thrill to be back here once again, ladies and gentlemen, in New York. I've got a nice room here. I'm staying at City Hall. <laughs> Nobody else does, but I want to tell you. <laughs> It hasn't changed a bit. It really hasn't changed a bit. New York, with the tall buildings and the short-changing waiters. I was, uh, I was, uh, last night, I fell asleep in the Times uh, Square subway, fell asleep there, and somebody lowered a wad of gum through the grating and stole my bridge work. It's the same, <laughs> it's the same, same old New York. And they tell me, a lot of people tell me that when a big star comes to New York, they're besieged by autograph towns. That's what they tell me. Well, I, I, uh, kid came up to me this afternoon, asked me for my autograph, I gave it to him, and he slapped my face because I wasn't Hopalong Cassidy. There's a man that's really doing it. Oh, is he grabbing the loot? Old Hopalong, they've got every, he's selling everything. They even have Hopalong bed sheets now to get the kids to bed. That's right. Oh, he's the Bank of America with saddlebags. <laughs> and you can't, you can't imagine the influence that these Western uh, pictures and everything have had on our children today. Believe me, now when a kid wants to leave the classroom in school, he doesn't raise his hand anymore. He just saunters up to the teacher and he says, I'll reckon as how I got a hankering to visit the old corral. <laughs> You know, I'm very, I'm very thrilled to be back once again for Frigidaire, and especially this week, I'm indebted to these people for inviting our whole troupe of entertainers that made the trip from Honolulu to Guam to Okinawa to Japan, Korea, Alaska, and back. 25,000 miles, and I love the Frigidaire people for allowing our whole troupe to appear here tonight, and especially with this type audience. We're sort of observing military week here. We have a, a, a GI audience here with all servicemen. I think it's the first time in a television show 
Don't throw the camera on them. They may be AWOL, but I want to tell you. <laughs> I can't. I can see the look on your faces. <laughs> no, but I, I want to say that we had a wonderful trip, and all the people are here with us. You know, and I, I want to tell you a little about the trip because it was great fun. You know, you just, just don't start on one of these trips. You have to arrange for it. For instance, I went to Washington to the Pentagon building. Pentagon building, that's Bellevue with a revolving door, and I walked in. <laughs> I walked into General Vandenberg's office, and I said, look, I'm ready to go. He said, that's obvious. Digger Odell is two doors down. <laughs> I said, no, I want to fly to Korea. He said, oh, do you want a plane? I said, that's the only way I fly. I don't smoke anything stronger than Chesterfield. <laughs> so he said, he said, well, maybe I can arrange it. There's a lot of red tape connected with getting a person out of the country, but in your case, I think it is worth it. And uh, he said, you'll have to go across the street and get your shots. But he warned me that I, everybody, my, a lot of people might faint afterwards, but I fooled him. I fainted going across the street. <laughs> And the shots that they gave us, they gave us uh, yellow fever shots. They're great, they're real great. You get a fever and you turn yellow right away. <laughs> I turned a deep brown because I was a little yellow to start with. <laughs> but no, please, no, who cued that? Who cued that? <laughs> but after my physical, they gave me the same classification as I had in the last war, chicken first class. <laughs> I do want to tell you, we have a long show. We have all these acts that made the trip with us, so I don't want to take up too much time because you're going to see a lot of me, probably too much. Now I want to introduce the number one band of the nation, the number one band in my heart, a band that played all the way from Honolulu to Guam, Okinawa, Penyang, Wansang, Seoul, up through Alaska, and really gave a lot of entertainment. Mr. Les Brown and his orchestra right here. Let's go. <laughs> much Les Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, here are three gals that made the trip with us all the way. I'm very thrilled. This is their New York debut. They're almost as nervous as I am, but I want you to meet the three tailor-maids from San Francisco. Let's <laughs> Flash, bam, alakazam, 
James, how's it coming? Just putting the finishing touches on it, General. Oh? What a plane the F-63 is going to be. Imagine 2,000 miles an hour. General, aviation history will record three important events. The Wright brothers, Billy Mitchell, and now the F-63. We realize that, Jim. That's why the Air Force has invested not only time and money, but manpower. Two flyers were severely injured flying that F-63. It's the air pressure, General. At 2,000 miles an hour, the human body is practically broken in half. Now, what about that new flying suit you've been working on? And that's our only hope. We've designed an inverted dynamo-hermatic pressure suit based on Sorensen's theoretical insulation. Splendid. Then we can test the F-63 immediately. Oh, no, no, no. First, we must find a man who has the stamina, ability, and courage to fly this plane. <laughs> and we must find this man at once. The United States needs the F-63. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain Gilbert. Those are my orders. But, sir, I know I can do it. I can fly the F-63. According to my instructions, the test flight of F-63 is to be made by Major Robert Hope. He'll be arriving from Washington any moment. You mean old tailwind Hope? <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, sir, I don't think he's much of a pilot. Come, Gilbert, come. Hope has a splendid record. Why, I flew alongside him in the raid over Berlin in 1944. That was the day he brought down 76 planes. That must have been a thrilling sight. I didn't see it. He shot down my plane, too. <laughs> That's what I mean, sir. Hope is an erratic pilot. Well, maybe so. But in view of his splendid record, it's only fair that Major Hope be allowed to, to be the first pilot to fly the F-63, the only plane in the world that can travel at a speed of 2,000 miles an hour. Oh, God, he's a lucky man. Yes, but in spite of his great success, Major Hope has remained a, a, a simple, modest fellow, never taking advantage of his rank or authority. <laughs> the United States Air Force takes pride in announcing the arrival of Major Robert Hope. Star of stage. I'm engaged. I'm 4F. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. That's enough. Thank you very much. You two have been peaches and cream about this whole thing. Here, stripes for everyone. There you are. <laughs> Share those among you. There you are. And as a further reward for your services, you're all invited to a party in my barracks. Yes, sir. We're going to have champagne wine, and we're going to barbecue a second lieutenant. Right after. <laughs> Major Hope, I'd like to say uh, that... Ah, uh, just a second, please. Say, uh... <laughs> Sergeant, uh, I seem to have lost my duffel bag. Will you retrieve it for me, please? Yes, sir. And Sergeant, 
It's the plaid one with the rhinestones on top. Please. <laughs> now, you were saying, General... Well, I was about to say that it's wonderful seeing you again. Remember you... me? You shot me down over Berlin in 1944. Really? Whose side were you on? <laughs> Why, the Americans. Oh, well, we had to sacrifice something for speed in those days. Yeah. <laughs> you know how we were moving, General. Yes, indeed. Well, it, it's wonderful to have you here to fly the F-63. It's a privilege and an honor to have a man like you in this outfit. I can understand your enthusiasm. Oh, uh, <laughs> by the way, Major, I'd like you to meet Captain Gilbert. Gilbert? Oh. <laughs> the hell's the matter? What's uh, Captain Gilbert's been chomping to get at that F-63, but I guess he's out of luck now that you're here. <laughs> so you... You've been trying to snare my job, eh? How many miles do you have? How many hours? 7,000. How many hours do you have? Six hours, 20 minutes. <laughs> How many miles have you flown? 750,000, and you? I went to Newark once. <laughs> what size shoe do you wear? 10. 12 and a half. Five. <laughs> Gentlemen, there's no question in my mind who should fly the F-63. Why, Captain, look at the Major's decoration. <laughs> Eisenhower bars it for parades. <laughs> the Bronze Star. Three Congressional Medals of Honor. One of my slower days. <laughs> Major, what's this here for? Oh, this I got in a dogfight. Really? Yes, I shot down two Cocker Spaniels in an Airedale. <laughs> that is the order of the Purple Strongheart. <laughs> Plaza 34099. What's that? Plaza 34099. <laughs> yes, that was quite a battle, too. Say, I, uh... <laughs> Bring your hat sometime. We'll go. Say, uh, <laughs> you haven't seen that, have you? you um, are... I've never seen so, so many uh, ribbons and medals before. <laughs> oh, what's this here for? Oh, that one holds my pants up. That's very handy. <laughs> Here's your duffel bag, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Open it, please. Yes, sir. There you are. There you are. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait for me at the officers' club. Be patient. There's a big line. <laughs> I never go anywhere without my co-pilot. Thank you very much. Eat your stripes out. Say, so, well... Major Hope, it's time to take F-63 up. Get into your flying Thank you very much. Thank you. Q, Q. General, I appeal to you. It's obvious from this man's actions that he's not equipped to fly a plane 2,000 miles an hour. Well, he's nothing but a playboy. A playboy, huh? I'll have you know I was in the Air Force before you were born, Captain. Why, in those days, we, the Air Force was so poor, we had to fly in our long underwear. Really? Yes, sir. After five years of that, I was flap happy. <laughs> You're not a real flyer. All you want is the glory. The glory, huh? I want you to know I've had such a brilliant career that Hollywood is making a picture based on my life story. Yes, who's going to play your part? Betty Grable. <laughs> Betty Grable was never a flyer. That's all right. I was never married to Harry James. <laughs> You'll never get the F-63 off the ground. Why, with that figure, you can't even get into the cockpit. What's wrong with my figure? You're built like a bomb bay with the doors open. That settles it, Captain. That settles it. That's insubordination. I'm going to break you to the rank of colonel. But that's a promotion. What do I know? My writers were in the Navy. <laughs> I'll take up the F-63, General, and with good reason. Why, I'm the biggest ace in the Air Force. <laughs> Let's not have a pause here. Come on, take over here. Here your flying orders, sir. Yes, sir. Major, mm -hmm. you will take the F-63 to a maximum ceiling of 45,000 feet. Naturally. From there, you will go into a G-9 spin and pull out 10 feet from the ground. Roger. Then you will climb to maximum altitude again, execute a barrel roll. Rodney. Three loops, and then simulate a crash landing at 2,000 miles an hour. Any questions? Is it too late to get the flying Irishman? <laughs> is he buckled up, Sergeant? Yes, sir, he is. Major, you'll be under terrific air, air pressure when you're in flight. If any snaps, buckles, or laces come untight, they're not tight and secure, why, the result could be disastrous. Watch it, Sergeant. Here's your helmet, sir. Thank you very much. <coughs> this is what loused up Notre Dame. Where is everybody? To the plane! Hey! Go this way, Major. This Wait a minute, sir. What's that? One of your buckles is undone. Oh, who wants that, Sergeant? Oh, I'm glad you caught that, Sergeant. Everything in that suit must be tight, airtight. We don't want to lose our greatest pilot. Good luck. Happy landing. Geronimo. Stout fellow. What's... Don't add anything, will you, please? <laughs> What 
happened? I forgot to tie my shoelaces. <laughs> Is there something I can do for you, young man? Yes, sir. Here. I want to buy my mom a refrigerator for Christmas, and I've saved up $3.15. Well done. I'm afraid that's hardly... Oh, uh, <clears throat> why, certainly, sir. Now, here's a refrigerator I know your mother likes. It's a new Frigidaire. Isn't it a beauty? Dad, this is the one. This is the one Mom said she wanted. It sure is. Say, will it keep ice cream real cold so it doesn't get all gooey? I'll say it will. See this big freezer chest up here? Holds over 49 pounds of food. Enough ice cream for a party. And your mom's meat and frozen foods besides. Can you see up there, Billy? Sure, Pop. Gee, look at all the ice cubes. And these trays slide right out. Then you just lift this lever and the ice pops out of the tray. Jeepers! Oh, well, certainly seems to be lots of room in this Frigidaire. Mom will like that, Billy. I'll say. You'll get on one of Frigidaire's best features. With this freezer chest, the adjustable shelf arrangement, and these two deep hydrators down here, your wife can shop just once a week if she wants to. Well, that should save a lot of extra trips to the store. You'll get years of trouble-free service from this Frigidaire. You know, it's powered by Frigidaire's famous meter miser, the simplest cold-making method ever built. So you can always depend on good, safe cold from top to bottom. Hey, Pop, can we put a big red ribbon on it like that one? Can we? <laughs> we sure can. Looks like you've made a sale. Where will we put our presents? Won't fit under the tree or in Mom's stocking. Well, don't you worry about that, Billy boy. No matter where we put it, Mother will say it's the best Christmas present she ever got. Boy, oh boy, am I glad I bought a Frigidaire. <laughs>
This is the post I'm worried about, General McGee. The one we call Operation Frigidaire. I'm worried about those poor boys in those huts up there on the Arctic Rim of our experiment center. They've been up there for 22 months in sub-zero weather, with no contact with the outside world. No man can stand that. They're bound to crack. General Van, I'm afraid I'll have to disagree with you. I handpicked every one of those men myself. They're the highest type, and I have the greatest confidence in them. Why, General, if you and I could take a look into one of those huts up there in the Arctic right now, even after 22 months of miserable weather, endless hardship, soul-cracking isolation, I'll bet there isn't one case of nerves amongst them. I'm sorry. I lost my head, that's all. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's this country. Nothing but snow, ice, and wilderness. Day after day, month after month. I can't stand this place. I come from California. And I want to get back to California. Back there with his birds sing all day, and the warm sun comes shining in your window. And you get up in the morning, and you run to the door, and you throw it open, and you run. <laughs> That's what I mean. And this is the hottest day we've had this year. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. I gotta do something about it. I think I'll take the easy way out. That's what I'll do. Wait I'll a just... minute. None of that. Okay. All right. What a country. I know. It's up here. Nothing but hundreds of miles, but frozen wastelands. Nothing but the tundra. I don't mind the tundra, but I'm afraid of the lightning. <laughs> Critic. <laughs> what a country. No dames. No dames. Long time no she. <laughs> no nothing. No human being can stand this. First time it happened, we thought they were real. Ungalula mula bunga mula. Ungalula bula hula ha. Moka hoopa moka. Noka buka doopa da ha. I don't know what we're saying. I'm just being nice till I find out if it's a dance. Yeah, you never can tell up here. All these Eskimos look alike. Hey, you. You man or woman? Too many clothes, never find out. <laughs> We're schnookered again. Me bring mail. Yeah, oh, fine, give me that. Seven cent postage due. Seven cents for what? Me bring mail many miles across tundra. Me don't mind tundra, but me scared of lightning. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta get faster dogs, kid. We just did that joke. <laughs> Come on, Toots, give me that letter, will you, boy? Seven cent postage, too. Okay. <laughs> One of them smells counterfeit. <laughs> Look, I think I'm a guppy short here. Oh, go while, let me go now. Yeah, okay, you did a nice job, kid. 
Since Gary took over, Crosby will do anything to make a buck. Oh, boy! A letter! A letter! What's it First say? First one we've had in 22 months. What's it say? Wait a minute. I'll read it. Dear sir. Oh, it's a free tango lesson from Arthur Murray. It says, dear sir, are you a social outcast? Then learn to dance and you'll get all the girls you want. Ah, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. It says, if you're too shy to attend one of our dancing classes, the Arthur Murray system will send a hostess right to you wherever you live. How about, come in. Like that. Thank you very much, Charlie. Oh, the double men were moving up. Going stateside. Oh, boy, I was flipping my lid. We're leaving just in time. Yeah, just in time for you. Just in time for me. Too late for him. What do you mean, too late for me? You think I'm cracking up, huh? I want to tell you I'm okay. Whoop! What are you doing? That butterfly just bit me again. Where is it? Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out. Those crazy taxi cabs. Watch them. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Look out, boys. Everything will be fine. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. I'm cracking. It's this country that got me. But I'm going to get somebody else, I tell you. Oh! 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 oh. Hey. You can't die. You can't die. I absolutely forbid it. The government needs you. Where are you from, the army? No, we're from the income tax department. <laughs> get the money! I was telling you about. Oh, wait. Well, just have them wrap it up and pile it on top. Oh, where's your Christmas spirit? It'll only take a minute to look at this one range. And besides, you might want to uh, give it to somebody. Look at these double ovens. You know, Marge Nelson has a Frigidaire just like this. And yesterday, she showed me how she could roast a turkey and bake three mince pies for the PTA social all at once. Now you're talking my language. I love mince pies. Oh, you have no idea how much time and work two big ovens like this can save you. Oh, and see this clock? I suppose you're going to tell me it cooks your meal for you? Right, Smarty. All you do is set it. It turns the oven on, cooks your meal, and then turns the oven off again at the time you set. Just that easy. Can I help you folks? Oh, thank you. I have some packages to pick up at the other counter, but my husband would love to hear more about this Frigidaire range. Wouldn't you, dear? Be back in a minute. You know... I strongly suspect my wife would like this range for Christmas. <laughs> she sure was giving you a mighty good sale, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> and she's right. This range is a marvelous buy. Uh, did she tell you it's finished inside and out in lifetime porcelain, which makes it real easy to clean? Oh. And these wonderful new cooking units give you really fast economical heat. Well, there's no need to go any farther. I, I know my wife's looked at all kinds of ranges, but her heart's really set on this frigid air, so maybe I'd better get it. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Nelson Case. If you're looking for a Christmas gift for the whole family, see these wonderful new Frigidaire ranges. Now take a look at this compact Thrifty 30 model. It's only 30 inches wide, but it has the biggest oven of any household range. Or maybe you'll prefer this handsome Frigidaire Deluxe range with the roomy even heat oven and all the other deluxe features. Whatever range you choose, you can depend on it to make both your cooking and your meals a lot more enjoyable. Now back to the Comedy Hour, starring Bob Hope. Thank you very much. Right now, I want you to meet a very beautiful volunteer of our trip, a gal that was a 25,000-mile showstopper, whether she was playing out in the field for the boys or in hospital wards. I get a big kick out of introducing the very lovely Marilyn Maxwell. <laughs> And thank you, Bob. Well, I, I tell you one thing. I know these boys are very thrilled to see you. And I'm certainly 
Glad to be reunited once more with you, Marilyn. And uh, here we are in the city here, and the show will be over in a very few minutes, and I just thought that maybe, well, uh, uh, would you like to have dinner with me tonight? Well, I'd like to, Bob, but I don't think I can afford it. <laughs> no, I mean, this is a big city. There's a lot of places to go, Marilyn, and, and I thought, well, uh, you know, you, it's nice to have somebody with you. Uh, uh, would you consider going out with a fellow a little older than yourself? Well, of course, Bob. Why? Do you have a son? Yes. <laughs> How can you say those things? Well, you know, Bob, after all, let's face it, there is a big difference in our ages. I know, but I'm willing to overlook that. I think that, uh, <laughs> after all, Gloria Swanson goes out with fellas much younger than she is, and I thought maybe you know how things are. Well, you know, <laughs> Bob, you know, you, you can't kid me because I found out just how old you really are. You did? Mm -hmm. How'd you find out? Well, I looked on your driver's license and it said, for covered wagons only. <laughs> You're doing very well up here. I'd like, you mind if I get one laugh? Huh? <laughs> I want to tell you, it does, doesn't mean anything, Maxwell. I'll tell you why. You know, a boy and girl can go along and live for a long time because, look, after all, when I'm 130, you'll be 118. Who's going to talk, huh? <laughs> and don't forget, Someday, your figure will start to spread. Your fall and arches will drop like lead. You'll find your beautiful smile has fled. No hair atop of your shiny head. Don't let the wrinkles upset you. I'll still be happy I met you. Darn it, baby, that's love. Someday, you're gonna lose your position. We'll have the doctor in twice a week. My sheep will suddenly go and peek. You'll be so deaf that you'll have to shriek. Though you're a physical wreck, dear, I'll still be happy to neck, dear. Darn it, baby, baby that's love. That's love, that's love. Sell it, Ma, sell it. We might as well be sensible. That's love, that's love. To me, you're indispensable. Despite the fact that someday you're gonna be really beat. Oatmeal is all that they'll let you eat. Boy Scouts will help you across the street. Too old to even be indiscreet. And though you'll be too weak to court me, I'm still gonna let you support me. You will always be my turtle dog. It's me for you and you for me collecting social security darn it baby that's love just picture me at 93 with the brand new bundle in the nursery and you <coughs> <laughs> can't you see the look on old doc kinsey darn Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. You know, no show would be complete without this next type of act, and I want you to notice the way they dress. And it's the same way they dressed when they were playing in Honolulu, Okinawa, Guam, Penyang, Seoul, Poonville, Downville, anywhere. Here I want you to meet the Hi Hatters. Let's give them a great big <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, we have to kind of rush because we're trying to get all the acts in. I'll be all right. <laughs> Here's a boy. Did one of the outstanding jobs in our unit. Fella took his guitar. A lot of places where the band couldn't go. He's a capital recording star. He's made so many Western pictures, he run out of Indians. <laughs> Let's give one of the bigger hands to my pal, Jimmy Wakely, right here. When a woman gets the blues, she hangs a little head and cries. When a woman gets the blues, she hangs a little head and cries. When a man gets the blues, he grabs a train and rides. Every time I see that lonesome railroad train, every time I see that lonesome railroad train, makes me wish I was going home again. I got the blues so bad that the whole round world looks blue. I got the blues so bad the whole round world looks blue. I ain't got a dime and I don't know what to do. One thing, boy, you're one of the outstanding Okies of our age. Well, thank you, Tex. I'm glad you like well, the singing. Would thank you, you, boy. Thank you very much, like boy. Like sing one with me. Would I like to sing one, boy? Play that thing. Let's sell the medicine and get out of town before we get stoned. Go, boy. <laughs> See them a tumbling down, 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 down. Legs and I love to the ground, 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 ground. Lonely but free, I'll be found, 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 found. Drift. Sing along with the weeds. <laughs> I know, I know. When the night is gone, when the night is gone, that a new, that a new world's born at dawn. Oh, I'll keep rolling along, long, long, long. Deep my heart is a song, 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 song. Here on the range I belong, long, long, long. Drift. Along with the milk weed. Hello there. I just have to sit and catch my breath. Why, sure. I brought my grandchildren down to see Santa. Oh, good. Left them in your toy land over there for a few minutes. Oh, my, but this feels good. Oh, these youngsters sure keep you busy this time of year. You just make yourself comfortable. Good-looking washer, isn't it? It certainly is. It's the new Frigidaire, a completely automatic, lifetime porcelain inside and out. Really the ideal washer. Well, the ideal washer for me would be one that does all the work. Well, this one does. You don't even have to get your hands wet. Oh. You just set this dial. Put the soap in here, put the wash in the top. Then what do I do? Not a thing. Once you've set the dial for the fabrics to be washed, the washer does the rest. Washes the clothes, rinses them twice, and spins them so dry that many are ready to iron. Imagine. But how clean does it get your clothes? Oh, the cleanest you've ever seen. That's because of what the frigid air people call live water action. Live water action? Yes. Now you see this? This is called a pulsator. As it goes up and down, it creates really penetrating currents of live water. And the pulsator keeps sending these hot, sudsy currents through and through your clothes, again and again. And what's more, your wash is always underwater. It's not half in and half out. So your wash gets thoroughly clean. That's simply wonderful. But how about lingerie and finer things? I've always done mine by hand. Well, you can put your finest fabrics in this frigid air. Because the frigid air, well, it just has this gentle action. The clothes are never tumbled or tugged or rubbed against metal parts. And now here's another thing. The frigid air doesn't jiggle or shake the way many automatic washers do. 140 revolutions per minute. 
and look. Why, there's hardly a ripple in that glass of water. Sure, and the washer isn't bolted to the floor, either. Well, for once, I'm going to tell my children what I really want for Christmas. That is, if I don't buy it for myself first. Good. And you might tell them to also see the Frigidaire electric ironer, the electric clothes dryer, and the electric water heater. They're all made to take the drudgery out of wash day. Now back to the Comedy Hour, starring Bob Hope. <coughs> all right, men, you have a six-hour liberty in Tokyo. I want to remind you we've just returned from a war zone. We've all seen and heard a lot of things that the enemy would like to know. Therefore, wherever you go, whoever you meet during your liberty, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> lots of spies in a big city like this. So whatever you do, don't get loaded and start blabbing. Not one military or naval secret must leak out. You got that straight, Jughead? Aye, 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 aye. All right, dismiss. <laughs> oh, man. Six hours in Tokyo. Let's go. Let's get the talent. Let's get some girls. Are you kidding, shorty girls? You want to waste six hours in Tokyo? I'm going fishing. Fishing? Fishing. You crazy or something? <laughs> Imagine a guy spending his time in Tokyo going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the one that got away. <laughs> oh, just as I thought. What? You're a girl. How oh. could you tell? Oh, I don't know. I just took a wild guess. Say, you're... <laughs> Where did you get that beautiful dress? Would you like this? Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's nothing special. Just a simple peasant outfit. Peasant? What are they complaining about? <laughs> oh, that's too good for them. Come, Clyde. Take my hand and sit on the couch. Your hand? I'd rather sit with all of you. <laughs> oh, isn't this great, huh? Ta -da. Oh, here we are. Just the two of us, all alone. And we have only six hours. Six hours. So let the night be filled with romance. Yes, honey, you're beautiful. Do you Simonize your eyeballs? <laughs> <laughs> Do you say this is beautiful, baby? I can relax you. I don't have to worry about spies. Spies? Yeah. What spies? Well, that's people who work with the enemy. You know, they get a serviceman drunk and try to get secret information out of them. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. You're absolutely safe. I yes. know that, baby. I know it. I just want to relax, that's all. Secret Agent 32 calling Secret Agent 35. <laughs> Bring in the liquor, please. Yeah, I tell you. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want anything to drink. I'm not oh, supposed to have it. Oh, just, I, just I... a little one to toast our love. Well, just a shorty for the toast, I guess. All right. Okay, I... <laughs> What a spot to hold the roller derby. <laughs> I'll have to go to Niagara Falls for a chaser. There you are, darling. Oh, thank you very much. If I'd have known this, I'd have brought my laundry. <laughs> now, wait just a second. Wait just a second. There you are. <laughs> Can't drink it without an olive, you know. Well, here goes. Lachheim. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, what is that stuff? Oh, it's a very rare oil wine. Really? My butler crushes the grapes with his feet. Well, next time, tell him to take his shoes off. Will you? <laughs> oh, that stuff makes me very lightheaded. And why not, darling? You deserve some fun and relaxation after spending weeks on that battleship with all yeah. those men, yeah. with all those sailors. Yeah. Tell me, just how many men do you have on your ship? Well, up to last week, we had 6,500, but then we added 200 radar specialists to work on the new equipment we're going to use in the secret drive up north next month. Well, isn't that interesting? 200 radar specialists to help on the big push up north next month. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 what's that? What's oh, that? Oh, nothing, dear. Probably just a mouse. A mouse? First mouse I ever heard that went to radio school. What was that? <laughs> I got a sneaky feeling there's something... Oh, darling, darling. What? We have so little time. Let's make every moment count. Just put your arms around me. Hold me. Hold me. Please, my dog tag is panting. <laughs> oh, Clyde. Clyde, if you only knew how I've been looking forward to seeing you, how I've longed to caress you, Tell me you care for me. More than anything else. Tell me you miss me. Every moment. Tell me what time Admiral Harkins is arriving with a new G-32 gyroscopic bombsite. 
You're just a big bundle of love. <laughs> yes, yes, but what time is Har Admiral Harkins arriving? Admiral Harkins? Mm -hmm. Oh, he ought to be walking into his headquarters right now, right down the street. Well, isn't that yeah. wonderful? <laughs> Admiral Harkins is arriving at headquarters now. <laughs> What was that? What was that? <coughs> oh, pardon me. Say, what was that? What was that? Is Admiral Harkins there, dear? Yeah, he's all over the place. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Come I've got a sticky feeling down. there's something weird going on here. Weird? Yes, weird. Nonsense, darling. Good evening, Fräulein. Good evening, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones? Sig hi. Burma shave. Say, uh... <laughs> Mr. Jones, does he live here? Oh, yes, but it's just temporary. He's waiting for a guest shot on the Arthur Godfrey show. Oh, really? <laughs> That's what television needs, new faces. So you know, I got a funny feeling this oh, fellow... Oh, beloved, the time grows short. Let's not talk. Just hold me and press my lips. Yeah, but, huh? Press my lips, darling. Why, are they wrinkled? <laughs> you don't love me and you won't kiss me and you haven't even told me what you've been doing on your ship. Well, it's a big secret. I'm not supposed to tell anybody that I'm working on the new uh, trigger mechanism for the jet-propelled torpedo. That's the new one, see? Oh, you're working on that? Yeah, in fact, I'm in charge of it. I got it right here. I wouldn't go any place without it, you see? Oh, well, who, who cares about that silly old secret weapon? Just kiss me, darling. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, baby, there's something I think you ought to know. What is it, darling? Well, when I kiss you, nothing happens. Oh, Clyde, you're cute. Now, you better put that away or it might fall in the wrong hand. Yeah, boy, I bet Stalin would like to get a peek at this. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? What's the matter? <laughs> you smoking a white owl? <laughs> any attention to me, and you know how I've been dying to see you. Yeah. What's this? Oh, that's the Navy code. It took him 10 years to perfect that. I've got to have that. Oh, this is a very interesting little book. Yeah, and i got to have it back. You might lose it and fall in the hands of a spy. Oh, no. No, I'll put it where it'll be safe. Yeah, well, i got to have... You got... I got... You, uh... <laughs> they didn't cover this in boot camp. <laughs> You, uh, you gotta give that back to me. Don't be a fool. My government has use for this code. Your government? Wait a minute, now it all adds up. You're nothing but a spy. I'm gonna report you to Naval Intelligence. You think so? Milty, you're not going anyplace. Uncle Milty here is the judo champion of Japan. He'll take care of you. Are you kidding? This mill dude, Mickey Rooney? <laughs> he looks like the night watchman in Crosby's money belt. Are you kidding? <laughs> You take care of me. Why don't you get me some real opposition? A man. When he gets through with you, you won't think you're such a man. I won't think I'm a man, huh? Come here, boy. I'll show you. Oh, are you kidding? Won't think I'm a man. Come here, boy. Oh! oh. Just call me, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boy. This is a marathon, isn't it? That's why I like. That's what I like about TV. 
It's the only place where 20 million people can watch you have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> but I'm thrilled to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, that about winds up our clam bake. And on behalf of our 38th Parallel Dramatic Group, I want to thank you very, very much. Also, I want to announce right now that Eddie Cantor's on next week with a wonderful show. He's been doing some great shows. And we're very happy to watch Eddie next week. I want to thank Frigidaire once again for making it possible to bring you our overseas show. You know, this winds up Thanksgiving weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And while the turkey has gone the way of all hash, the memory of what Thanksgiving really means lingers on. You know, 300 years ago, some brave people that they called pilgrims gave thanks that the new ideal of freedom they brought to a new land had taken root and would last. That ideal is still with us. And tonight, it is being protected and strengthened by our 20th century pilgrims, all our service boys, and our boys out in Korea. Boys, really, who are too young to grow beards, but boys who are not too young to fire bazookas. So the next time you think as you please, or worship as you please, or vote the way you want, the next time you walk down the street of your hometown without fear, and when you hear the laughter of children who have had enough to eat, remember to give thanks, not only for the blessings we have come to take for granted, but also for the sons and husbands and brothers and fathers who put their lives away in mothballs and are fighting for the ideals planted here by the pilgrim three centuries ago. You know, the Iron Curtain boys thought they'd thrown the Sunday punch when they had backed us up to Pusan, but they forgot one little detail. Ever since Plymouth Rock, Americans have had something to fight for, and yes, die for if necessary. It's 10,000 miles from West Chet to Wan San, but the flame of freedom in the human breast defies all distance and brings men together in a fight for the common ideal of free and democratic world under God. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> From New York, Bridget Air, division of General Motors, has taken great pleasure in presenting the Comedy Hour starring Bob Hope with Marilyn Maxwell, Les Brown, and Jimmy Wakeley. Be sure and tune in at the same time every Sunday evening for the Comedy Hour, starring Eddie Cantor next Sunday night, The Hartman the following Sunday, and Fred Allen the week after that. And Bob Hope will be back with the Comedy Hour on December 24th. Until then, Bridget Air bids you good night. NBC Television.